Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and very happy to bring you a lesson I think should help a lot of artists. I'm calling this How to Rescue a Dud. Yes, we all have them. So this should be very helpful. And here's a little intro from me. Hello artists and welcome to Monet Cafe. Oh, I just love the beginning of a new month, announcing a new theme and especially when it's springtime related. I love flowers. I love painting fields of flowers. The theme this month in Monet Cafe is new life. Now that can be a, a broad theme, so you interpret that how you like. But I'm going to be bringing you, I've been promising watercolor tutorials. They are on the way um, with some beautiful flowers. But I'm going to show you in this video a pastel painting demonstration of how you can rescue a dud. And yes, I was just talking to one of my patrons. I have duds. All artists have duds. And it's really nice when you know you can really repurpose many surfaces and still create a painting. So don't give up. Don't get frustrated if you have duds either. We all do. Trust me, we don't show our duds. Even the best pastel artists don't show their duds typically. So anyway, let's paint these beautiful, bright and colorful spring flowers in soft pastel. I hope you learn a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We have so much fun here. All right, let's get started. And I'm able to keep these free lessons coming because of the support from my patrons on my Patreon page. If you would like to consider becoming a patron, it's only $5 a month and you get extra goodies and extra content. Now this particular dud that I'll be rescuing came to be as I was creating watercolor tutorials for this month. One of them just did not come out right. It was flat. What did I say? Artists don't show their duds. Well, there's my dud. So what I decided to do is to use some acrylic paint a foam brush, you could use a paintbrush, and some clear gesso. Now this is on watercolor paper, obviously. I've covered up all of the other watercolor paintings and I decided, you know, I can't paint watercolor back over this, so I'm going to do a trick that I do often. Clear gesso works great to create a pastel surface and I needed to kind of get rid of this background. So I had I actually have a whole bunch of acrylic paint that I never use. And that's the neat thing about art. What do they say? Necessity is the mother of invention. And so I decided, let's try some acrylic paint. This was heavy bodied acrylic paint, probably why I never used it. So I shot it with a blow dryer to get it nice and dry. And I don't normally choose a yellow underpainting, but you know me, I love to experiment. And I thought this is spring. I would like it to be really vibrant and bright. So now here's where the magic happens. Yes, you can use a product. I use this all the time called clear gesso, not regular gesso. It's clear, it's gonna dry clear, but what it's also going to do is it has little bits of sand in it. So it's like making your own DIY homemade pastel surface. And it's really an inexpensive way to create your own pastel surfaces on watercolor paper. Again, I have all of my watercolors covered up here and I knew I couldn't put watercolor on top of this. So I thought, let's do, I go back to my favorite medium, soft pastel. So. I'm gonna put two coats of this clear gesso on. I don't always do two coats, but in this case, I decided to just to get some extra grit. And voila, I have my own homemade pastel surface and I have restored a failed dud painting. So, all right, now let's get to the tutorial in soft pastel. And by the way, I do have a product review video on Liquitex Clear Gesso on my Amazon shop. I will include a link to that review video in the description of this video, and you can click to purchase the product there if you like. The reference image is from unsplash.com, which has quickly become one of my favorite little ways to get copyright free reference images. It's a great website. You get some really great professional photographers who upload their work. It's copyright free, so you can use it to paint from without any challenges. And here's my profile on there. I have my section called collections. You're welcome to find me on there and check out some of my collections. Not all of them are public though. Um, so but I do have one called Flowers that I got this one from along with all of the upcoming watercolor tutorials. So they're all in this one album. And I find it's really great sometimes just to gather a lot of photos that you like, put them in little files called collections, because what happens is sometimes you get in a creative mood to paint and you waste a lot of your creative energy just looking for something to paint. So it's really nice if you already have some collections ready to paint from. Now this particular photo is from 
Joanna Swan. And I want to thank you, Joanna. I actually already sent her a message thanking her for her lovely photo. And I like she says she likes telling stories one photo at a time. She has some lovely work. The soft pastels that I used primarily for this painting is the Paris Collection. And this is such a lovely collection by Sennelier. Sennelier pastels are so buttery and vibrant. I love it. This is my breakdown of kind of the layout of how they have them in the case. And I thought it was really well designed according to color and value. And uh, there is cat hair on my little set there because my cat uh, somehow found a way into my studio and took a nap on top of my pastels. And she's a white cat, so she was quite colorful afterwards. <laughs> I also like how Sennelier has on the side of their box a reference for every color and every number. I always recommend make your own color guide. The one I did before that you saw, literally, I took a photo of the box, converted it to black and white, and made a mark of each color on top of the corresponding pastel. That's a neat way to do it. So I will have a clickable link to this set in the description of this video. And by the way, it's one of the best values for quality pastels. It's a really good buy. Now, rather than using pencil to sketch, I often like to use vine charcoal or willow charcoal. They're just big sticks of charcoal. This one was rather thick. I had used up all of my other thinner ones, but I find that it helps to keep a real gestural feel. I hold it like way down um, on the stick rather than cinching it up like you would write with a pencil. And I just get in some of the general little flower shapes and keep it very um, lyrical and gestural because these flowers, what I loved about this photo is it felt like they were trying to peek around the corner of the road. I always seem to personify flowers and trees. Now this product, Gloves in a Bottle, is something that I heard recommended by artist Alan Picard. He's an amazing pastel artist. And and I don't use it often. I forget to use it basically, but when you put it on your hands, kind of like a lotion, it kind of keeps the soft pastel um, from being so dusty on it. That's the only way I can put it. I don't have to wash my hands quite as much. So that also can be found in my Amazon shop. I'll try to put a link to that in the description as well. Now I am going ahead and getting in my darks. I noticed in this particular reference photo, the background was very shadowy behind that field of flowers um, and behind the road. And I'm going to use, often I use a chamois cloth, that little square to the left, to blend with on this particular surface. You can't use it on every surface. But what I'm using here, you saw me hold up, these are packing peanuts that you get in packages to protect the contents of the package. And I found they worked really great on this homemade surface with the clear gesso. I have a whole bag full of them. I'm definitely going to use them again. Now I am getting a kind of a foresty green. It's kind of a darker, a darker value green, but not nearly as dark as the background. And I want you to take note, this is all real time, by the way, the rest of this is going to be real time. I think with the exception of one little part where I'm adding stems to the flowers. But I want you to take note that the painting is going to look a little bit dark for a while. I'm getting in my darker values and I'm getting in the ground color and I will gradually add lights, kind of like I just did to that little background tree. I gradually add my lighter values on top. And that's the beauty of soft pastel. And it's similar to acrylic and oil. You can get your darker values down first and layer the lights on top for nice contrast. Oh, this was a nice neutral green that was in that set. When things are in the distance, color gets more neutral typically. Um, so, oh, and I can't wait. I've got a... a video coming up soon on color that I can't wait to share. Um, but I wanted to make sure I had enough darks down for good contrast uh, in that background. And now I'm just scumbling in the road with a, it's kind of a dull color. It's a little dark. I'm going to lighten up the road. But notice too how so much of that surface is showing through. So what do I do? Voila, I get my little handy dandy packing peanut and looky there, it covered up all of that little space between where it just looked like it wasn't getting good coverage. I think that frustrates a lot of beginner artists especially, it depends on the surfaces you're working on, but when you're first starting out, you feel like everything should already be filled in and uh, resist the urge to oversaturate your painting to blend it, but it is nice at the beginning stages 
to use a little blending tool like this because you really can get down a good blanket of your color and value and then start to add your additional layers. And you could instantly see when I blended that road how much of an effect it had on making it look like a smooth application. So use blending sparingly though, and I suggest usually only in the beginning stages. Don't over blend. You're going to lose that beautiful color of pastel. And, um, and you kind of like crush its little particles that is what gives it the uh, brilliant color that it has, which I think is really more beautiful in color than any other medium. And now I'm uh, scumbling in a little bit of the dark around my little flowers that I had sketched in so gesturally. And I'm going to use the little blending tool again in a minute. Um, this is a, a really nice teal, kind of neutral, cool blue green. And I know that the color is going to cool off a little bit in the back. And I'm, I'm thinking about what's underneath all of those bright green uh, leaves. Other than the flowers, there's a lot of leaves and all kinds of this and that kind of grasses and leaves sticking up. And I need enough dark for contrast to lay those lighter grasses down on. So I'm kind of strategizing about what colors I want to use. I know I want in some places for things to cool off. There's going to be some shadows down underneath the sides of the road back there. The road kind of, there was a shadow from that one tree and then the road kind of curved around behind the shadow. Now here I am blending again and notice I'm just kind of loosely blending between some of the flower shapes but I don't have to be so careful and I only block off flowers that are quite large. I'm not worried about blocking out or sketching in flowers that are small. They can just be layered on top. Now this was a nice little magenta color that was in the set. I think so far every pastel I've used has been in this particular Paris collection set. Now I'm just scumbling in some of this pretty, I wanted to have a road that was kind of like roads in Georgia. If you're from the United States, Georgia has kind of red clay and uh, it's just real earthy and, and neat. And this still looks fairly dark, but I know in my mind that all of this is just the initial layers. So sometimes I think well, let me stop for a minute. Um, I did want to add in a little bit of the um, the things on the ground that were little rocks and sticks and things and give it a little bit of texture in just a, a few places. You don't want to overdo this and it's really going to diminish as it goes back into the background. Um, but I think as beginner artists, we have a tendency to paint almost like paint by number. Uh, we look at each particular color. We try to find that color and fill it in the teeny little space. And if you can realize as a pastel artist, the real depth of your art comes in layering, layering typically the darker value and then the lighter values on top of that. It also lends more towards the impressionism rather than, like I said, paint by numbers, the best way I can describe it, just filling in all of the little spaces. We're layering those colors um, and values on top of each other. And it really makes it start to look like, like life does. And by the way, I think I forgot to mention the size of this. It is five inches by four inches. And all of the paintings that are on this big sheet of watercolor paper are all five inches by four inches, or sometimes I turn them the other way and they're four inches by five inches. So I have almost all of them were vertical. Uh, this one was horizontal and I had um, one with sunflowers. That's a watercolor one that's um, that was horizontal landscape. It's called format. And the neat thing is when I'm done with all of these, you're going to get to see the watercolor lessons on all of the other uh, five paintings. And at the end, it's so neat to pull this tape off. You can see I have masking tape around this one and you just get the nicest, crisp, clean edge. It's really neat. Now I'm using that same pretty blue I talked about and I'm, I'm cooling off some of the distant grasses. They were a little warm and colors typically typically cool off a bit in the distance. Now you obviously want to consider your subject matter. I mean, um, even red flowers do cool off though in the distance. You go from a warmer red in the foreground to a cool red in the distance, but don't get so carried away with that to think you've got to change your red flowers to blue flowers. That's not that cool. <laughs> so hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Now, often with things that are purple, these had some beautiful purple lavendery type of 
flowers. Um, I don't know what they were, but they were just kind of uh, whimsical and all over the place back there. And often I will throw in a, a real pretty like blue. Uh, I find that those types of purple flowers have blue as a base and then you finally get to your purple this actual this purple right here was a purple that was in the um the set of Sennelier and I really love it it's a really neat neat purple it's kind of a it's in between purple and blue and that's one of my favorite colors actually uh, but I do get some more of the more lavender colors that I add later once again still working on um dark to light I'm gradually starting to lighten things up here uh, I even add a little bit of purple to that shadow across the road there, and I reinforce that a little bit later. So as you can see, and this is all real time, I'm just scumbling things in. Um, and now I'm using that uh, packing peanut again to soften up some of the areas in the distance. Now what happens to things in the distance? Well, typically they're not quite as in focus, right? You can tell that with your own eyes if you're looking out in nature. And by the way, I highly encourage that. Become a student of nature. I remember when I first started painting, it was like I started looking at the world with new eyes. I started like, oh my gosh, some of the things I've been learning is it's really true. Um, things do cool off in the distance, like distant mountains, and things really do get a lot blurrier in the distance. Now, those two colors there are kind of magenta colors. I didn't have a color like this in the Paris collection set that was this dark. Uh, it had some pinks in the set, but I knew for some of these pink flowers, they had a really... Uh, a darker base to them. There were shadows in between the all the pink petals. So this is the typical layering strategy. Let me go ahead and block in the darker value of what I think is the base color, the darkest color in those pink flowers. And then I'll gradually start layering the petals uh, as the light is hitting them directionally, uh, kind of as they're coming out and how the light is catching the petals uh, rotating around the flower. And so it looks a little, I don't know, uh, chunky and weird at first. I heard a term many years ago where uh, an artist, a really great artist, um, said that, I can't even remember who it was, I've, I've looked at so many good artists, but that said that um, your painting goes through like an adolescent phase, you know how we're all kind of um, I don't know, a little uncoordinated and whatever as teenagers. I know I was. I went through a real height growth spurt. I'm kind of tall and I was just as clumsy as I could be. But um, anyway, your painting kind of goes through that too. And when you're first starting, sometimes you get frustrated with that. I did that so much that I would say to my husband, I would be like, oh, this is terrible. I am not getting this. And he would say, you say that every time, Susan, and then and it starts to come together. And uh, so give it some time and just embrace the fact that, yeah, it's going to look a little, a little, uh, I don't know, unfinished at first. And I noticed this with, uh, there are some artists that, I don't know, it looks good kind of the whole time. Have you ever seen those artists? But um, I see a lot of really professional artists where it takes a while. This initial blocking in stage and building up stage uh, does take a little bit of time. And then, then the fun begins. It's like icing on the cake. You know, baking the cake, takes it's a lot of work at first you know well first you got to go buy you got to plan it you got to get a recipe you got to buy all the ingredients you got to go to the store you got to put it in your buggy you got to go home I always say man there's so much I love cooking but there's a lot to it <laughs> you got to take it out you got to do everything and finally what's the fun part if you're making a cake that you're decorating it's the decorating part so you're laying you're baking a cake you're you're getting all the ingredients together right now and it eventually will come together but let me talk a little bit more about the point of this video, or one of the points of this video. You know, my videos, I cover a whole lot of topics. And, uh, but when it comes to creating a dud, uh, it happens. You know, I, like I said, with that watercolor painting, some things just didn't work out. It, it was very flat. And I decided rather than beating myself up about it, you have a couple of options when you create a dud. Now, if you're working on a surface that you don't really have any options to um, restore it, to repurpose it like I've done here, uh, one of your options is to T throw it away toss it what do they call that file 13 it's the trash can <laughs> toss it and uh, move on and know that you learned something even with your painting that wasn't one that you would want to share with the whole world you know but you learned something you learn something with every single painting 
I have a lot of artwork that a lot of artwork that I've thrown away. And what's going to happen too is as you grow as an artist, um, you're going to look back at some of your work that you did a couple of years before, and you're going to see how you grew. You're going to see a painting that, you know, two years ago you thought, wow, that was really good. And it was good for the time that you did it. And then a few years later, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I have really come a long way since then. So don't get frustrated. And I think that's why I like the slogan um, that I, the slogan on Monet Cafe was, um, uh, art with friends is better, which it is. That's the whole thing here. We're doing this together, guys. We're learning together. Even though we can't physically hug each other, which I wish I could, um, we are together um, because of the wonderful thing of the internet, you know. But I changed the slogan to live, love, paint, because I think often we get so darn picky about our own work. And I've seen artists really get depressed because they weren't happy with the work that they were creating. And we forget that a lot of the joy is just in the creative process. I do voiceovers a lot for multiple reasons. One reason is because, oh, I need to talk about some of this. One reason is because I live on a busy road and sometimes I have to avoid the car sound. Um, but another reason is so that I can embrace the creative process. I love to put on some um classical music, have my candle burning, have a cup of tea. So embrace the moment. Enjoy that part too. All right. So now you can see I am adding some of the petals. Now can you see how that base of dark is starting to show in the little spaces, in the little negative spaces of the petals that I'm creating. And when it comes to flowers, I typically like to get just the basic shape of the flower with my darker underpainting. And then I start to look, again, working dark to light. Then I start to look at the next layer or color that I would put down. And I just sort of gesturally put them in. I squint my eyes. I look at kind of where they're at on the flower. And then I make a mark just in the general direction they're going in and gradually start adding lighter values until I get to the lightest. These are not the lightest pinks. You're going to see those at the end. Now, you saw me before. I added a little bit of that kind of orangey color. And then I go back in and add a little bit of that uh, lighter yellowy color on top of that. And that's the same concept of layering. I layered the dark and then I layered the light. And um, I, I added that dark to this flower. It had a large center. And now I'm doing that part where I'm uh, I'm looking, you can see me pausing there. I'm looking at where these petals are. Uh, I saw this one was kind of the petals were reaching upwards. So there was a more of a shadow on the viewer side. Uh, but there were also some areas on this flower where they looked like some of the petals were kind of um, old. Um, so I, I didn't want to add too much bright to those petals. So kind of pay attention to your reference image. It'll be a great guide for you. You don't have to do everything exactly like your reference image. I like to say find something that you just, it makes you happy. You're like, oh, that's just really, I love this. This is beautiful. And um, then leave in the things that you loved and take out the things that are just too busy or just don't really need to be there. Um, but use it as a guide, how the flowers are turning um, and uh, how some of the colors may have subtle differences because of the light and the shadow. Now, I did have, um, this is how, you know, I said the flowers seemed like they were all kind of peeking around to see what's around the corner of that road. I just love the mystery of roads and I wanted to um, just kind of personify these flowers as doing the same thing as people do. I always truly always think of uh, creation as as us, you know, I love how flowers turn to the sun and trees reach up to the sun and and it's like life is celebrating our creator. And uh, I just, I love it. I love that part about being an artist. So you can see how I've been just layering gradually. Now, I loved this. This is a color I don't often use. Well, no, actually, I use this one a little more than what I'm thinking of. There's a type of green that's almost like an artificial green. But this one I like. This one would be one I would use more in water or in a sky. Um, but it really worked well for some of the cooler little uh, grassy things that were going on underneath the flowers. Now, now you can see the dark green underneath the flowers. That's, that's like where the darkest part of those grasses and leaves are. And 
uh, the lighter part is what I'm gradually starting to layer now. I saw there was a lot of cool elements going on underneath there because some of the tall grasses were blocking the sun from some of these that were underneath. And I'm going to gradually work towards where I'm adding the bright greens, which is where are they going to be? They're going to be on top where the sun is hitting them. So that is coming. Um, and I'm and notice too, I'm working the hole. I... I don't get so caught up in one little area. Now, I used to, and it's very frustrating. For one, you overwork that area. Like if I just stayed focused on those two flowers in the foreground, and I just worked and worked and fiddled and fussed, um, it's going to lose continuity, and you're going to get frustrated. Now, those are three purples that are Terry Ludwig pastels. I don't know if I mentioned that before about the two burgundies I showed up. Um, if they're rectangular like this, these look square because I broke them in a half. They're wonderful Terry Ludwig pastels. I love their pastels. I love their company. Um, it's an American-made pastel. The owners are amazing people. And uh, not that I've met them in person, but I've communicated with um, uh, Jeff or Joff. I don't know how you say his name, but he is he's just such a neat guy. Um, so anyway... These have some great darks. So the purples I use that are really dark and the magentas that I use that were really dark are the Terry Ludwigs. And I'm just kind of, again, using my reference image as a guide. Sometimes I'll say, oh, no, I'd like that flower over there better. Or I want this one reaching out, um, looking around the road, giving my concept, you know, more meaning. Um, now, I did take this. I liked this purple to make a little bit more of the base of those lavender flowers there a little more dark down when they're getting closer to the ground and then I'm gradually going to add some of the lighter colors on top um, so I'm trying to do more real time I do sometimes take my uh, footage after the fact and take out any span of time that's a break I'm trying to make this convenient for you sometimes I'll walk away from my camera grab my coffee and so I don't want you guys to have to you know watch through all of that so I do take the time to really cut this video up so you're getting just the painting portion. Um, I think that that helps um, so you don't get bored either. And also so that the video is not so long to upload. Now, those are two pastels that are not in the Paris collection. I'm trying to make note to you guys when there's something else. These are just where was in my general workshop palette of some pinks that I had. This one was a little bit not quite as bright as the pinks that I used with those two foreground flowers. Now, this is a really, really neat pink. I think this one is a Schmincke pastel. It was just a little bit brighter than some of the pinks. Um, you can see kind of when I put it down on top of those. Very subtle difference. Now, I'm going to do that trick again. On top of the dark that I put in the center, I put the orange, and then I put the gold. And believe it or not, you don't cover it all the way up. You leave a little bit of the, the orange showing through, and you get that feeling of depth. Now I even add, here, come, here comes the icing. I even add some of these brights. They look super bright right now because I haven't added some of the, the lighter greens that are going to really start making this come to life. Um, I, wanted this, I want to shape this flower a little bit more more gestural um, and a little bigger so I laid down a little more of that magenta and now I'm layering I'm looking at some of the little um, the way the light is catching these petals and and I am paying attention to the flower I let the flower be my guide um, and uh, and the value I'm looking at the values as well I want to add a little bit more dark value down in some of these flowers just to give them a little more depth and this is where some of the the icing on the cake is going to start happening. I'm going to start adding more lights. I do refine some of these flowers. But I got to thank you guys, those of you who have commented. I've mentioned a couple of times that I do get, I, I'd say I get 98% great positive feedback and comments. And by the way, please comment. I love your comments. Um, other people love your comments, read your comments, and they learn from the questions you ask and the answers that I give. Also, it helps this video to uh, get seen by more people. YouTube will share this video more as a suggested video if it has a lot of comments and a lot of likes kind of quickly. But I've mentioned that I do, you know, 2% of the time or so, you know, get some negative feedback. But you know what? That's people. You never
never know. Some people, they may have just had a bad day and they're just, uh, I, I'm a good person to vent, they can vent their frustration to or whatever. And I know that happens. And I try to respond to everything with kindness and wow, thank you that I never thought of it that way. But sometimes I'll get comments like, boy, you sure do talk a lot or you sure are chatty. And, um, I just like to say, well, that's what I'm trying to do here is give you guys information about how to paint. And I also can't help that I am just a lover of life. And sometimes my comments might have to do with the Lord. I am a firm believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's probably what I get most negative comments about. But hey, I got to say who I am and why I am the way I am. And that's why I just love painting and our creation so much. So I want to thank you guys. Many of you are like, you just talk away. We That's how we're learning. So God bless you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, I love the fact that I'm able to give you guys, uh, free lessons and, you know, most of you are very, very tolerant of my craziness. Now, I didn't see many red flowers in this um, reference image, but I wanted to create a little bit of variety. Does anybody know what these flowers are? Are they zinnias? I love zinnias. Well, some of them look kind of like a little type of a daisy. Um, but I thought this will give a little bit of interest. So on top of the magenta, I layered a little bit of this pretty red. And you see how I'm just giving little almost geometric shapes for the petals and then the same concept of the center. Now also too, often flowers are not all pasted on the top of the grasses like, you know, uh, that will look very artificial because grasses do um, and leaves do cover flowers. So I'm going to have a few of them kind of buried when I add my leaves and grasses on top. Um, but really a lot of these were, you look in the reference image, a lot of them were really reaching up. There's a few of those purple ones buried down beneath. So keep that in mind uh, when you're adding some of your final grasses and layers is that burying some of them will make it more believable. And now I'm just looking for some of those flowers. I've already gotten in a little bit of the darker elements. I'm adding little highlights on top of things. And uh, this pastel also is not part of the Sennelier set. It was just kind of a medium pink that seemed nice for some of the, uh, the petals on the flowers. And notice I have them turning in different directions. That's another thing too. Even though a lot of these flowers are reaching up, towards the sun and some of them, like I said, kind of reaching down the road. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, you don't always have to have your flowers all facing the same direction. And now you can see these flowers were missing something, right? That were missing their stems. So I used a, I did speed that part up. I used a Prismacolor New Pastel. It's a harder pastel. You can get a little bit more of an edge to it. And this is a purple. I often love for shadows, adding some purples to the shadowy sides of the road. I feel like it just gives color interest. Um, and now just to keep this video a little small, I'm showing some of the icing on the cake part. Now I'm adding my greens. This is part of the Sennelier set, the Paris collection, in little um, gestural marks of leaves and grasses. Once again, using the reference image as my guide, but not as a strict um, photo that I have to follow everything exactly. And this is what's going to bring this to life. And there's another one of the Prismacolor New Pastels. I'm using it for some of the grasses. And now I've put it back to real time. I added a few more little uh, bits of debris and things on the road that would create shadow. I softened up. See how neutral this pastel is? It is part of this uh, Sennelier set, the Paris collection. I wanted to soften that dark background a bit because it's dark, but softening it a little bit is going to give it more of the feeling that it's further away. So I'm just kind of scumbling it in and um, not making that that dark look quite so black or so harsh. And here's that pretty purple again from the set. This is where I said I went in and added just some little fun marks of some of those lavender grasses or flowers in the background. Um, and also too, they're so far away, you want to keep it really subtle. I even added it in areas that I didn't see just to kind of harmonize some of the color. And now I'm lightening the road again. This is a Terry Ludwig pastel once again. 
and I'm squinting my eyes. I highly recommend that while painting. Um, what you can do is it allows you to see values better. I'm looking for the lighter areas in the road. The darker areas are a little more towards the edges, but there's a couple of areas that are just a little bit lighter than other areas. And so I'm just like, I use the word scumbling a lot because you want just um, general painterly marks. You don't have to have anything that is an exact rock or an exact leaf on the ground. It's just shapes and values. And that's not your focal point anyway. So you don't want to overdo the detail. Now here's this, look at this green. This is the, a beautiful green from the Paris Collection set. It is such a nice lime green. And I'm reserving this. If you look at the reference image, there's a few of those that are kind of like that green. And they're just on the tops. They're not even that much in the foreground. But a few of them, you know, just catching a little bit of the light. This color is not going to go down too deep into the grasses at all because the sunlight's not hitting it there. Um, and I used this green just to soften up that little, looks kind of like a little evergreen tree in the background. And here is the final painting of how I rescued a dud. I was going to call this video turning a dud into a stud, but I decided against that. Oh, and by the way, this painting is available, as long as it is available, in my Etsy shop. I just added a lot of new artwork. Also, too, if you're a patron of mine, you're going to get a few more goodies from this video. So stay tuned. And God bless you all. Happy spring. Happy April. Oh, yeah. And happy painting. <laughs>